Hello, hello, it's good to see you. Hello, hello, we're glad you're here. We're stuck at home, but we can still have fun. With crafts and laughs and silly songs, we're glad you're here. Hello, hello, it's good to see you. Hello, hello, we're glad you're here. We're stuck at home, but we can still have fun. With crafts and laughs and silly songs, we're glad you're here. In my wrestling and in my doubts, in my failures, you won't walk out. Your great love will lead me through. You are the peace in my troubled sea. Oh, you are the peace in my troubled sea. In the silence, you won't let go. In the questions, your truth will hold. Your great love will lead me through. Hello and welcome back to Hashtag Kids Club. We have missed you guys so much. I really hope that you've been staying safe during this funny old time. My goodness, there was no school for months in the spring. How insane is that? But I hope you're all keeping safe and well and keeping on washing your hands and social distancing and wearing masks and being extra cautious and extra safe. So, lots to tell you. So, since the start of the pandemic, there have been a lot of changes. First of all, Vicky and Mark have moved away so that Vicky can be a minister in Windsor. We're going to miss them all so much, but we wish them all the best on the next stage of this journey. And Lindsay is going to have a baby in February. Whee! Squishy babies, how exciting. And I had a baby too. My baby Neris was born in April. So she's our proper lockdown baby. Here's a picture of Neris. She can't wait to meet you all in person very, very soon. And we have another new addition to our team. We have a new minister. Her name is Can, and Can can't wait to meet you all either. Now it's coming up to Christmas. Are you excited? I'm super excited. I've brought with me my Christmas bag. I get it out at Christmas because it's just so shiny and green and Christmassy. And the green reminds me of my Christmas tree. Have you got your Christmas tree up? Oh, I 
hope you have because it's almost Christmas time. So the green reminds me of my Christmas tree and all its lovely decorations. It also reminds me of the field that maybe the shepherds stood in when the angels came down to tell them about Jesus being born. But it's not just a bag that's green on the outside. It's a bag that's green on the outside and white on the inside. And the white makes me think of other Christmassy things too. That's why it's my Christmas bag. The white makes me think of snow. Oh my goodness, it would be so exciting if it snowed at Christmas. That would be the best. The white makes me think of snow, but it also reminds me of angels because they were so dazzlingly white and bright. And this bag is pretty dazzlingly white and bright inside. But inside the white bag, there is a red bag. See, just here, it's red inside. And oh look, with the white like that, it looks like a Santa hat, ho ho ho. And the red does make me think of Father Christmas and all the presents I'll get because I've been an extra good girl this year. I have, I've been really, really good. I've been taking all the calls to the chief whilst we've not been at church and doing lots of important things. So the red makes me think of Santa. Red also makes me think of love. Did you know God loved us so much that he sent his only son, Jesus, to be with us? That is so amazing. And what a special gift to have. Now, inside the red bag, there is ba -ba 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 -ba, a black bag. Let's have a look inside the black bag. The black bag, black's not very Christmassy. Black feels like a bit of a dark and dank colour. But you know what? The black makes me think of the night sky when, because it's winter now, so it gets dark quite early. And the black makes me think of the night sky, but it makes me think as well about all the Christmas lights we can see in the dark. But the black also makes me think of times when maybe things haven't gone very right for us and times when maybe we need to say sorry. But that's OK because we don't stay black for very long because God makes us shiny and lovely. Just like the inside of the black bag. And inside the black bag, there's a piece of paper. We'll come back to that in a moment. But let's have a look. Whoa, lovely, shiny, golden bag. It makes me think of the wise men's golden crowns. But even more important than the wise men's crowns, it reminds me that Jesus was born a king. Jesus is the only person ever who was born a king. That's a really special thing. And Jesus wasn't just the king of his people in his time over 2000 years ago. Jesus came to be king of all people in all places for always. That's amazing. That's why God giving us Jesus is the best gift of all. Now let's have a look at this piece of paper that was in my bag. Here we go. Let's unfold it. Ba, 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 ba. Let's see. Oh my goodness, it's got lots of pictures on. <gasps> lots of pictures of all the things that I love at Christmas. I love seeing the angels. Do you have an angel on your tree? We have a beautiful angel on our tree. I'll show you later. And presents. Oh, I love getting presents. If I'm really lucky, I'll get a new diary. Eek, best gift ever. And a star. Have you got a star on the top of your tree? We've got a star on the top of ours. And here's a Christmas tree. This Christmas tree has a star on top. We decorated our tree a couple of weeks ago. We were a little bit early birdish this year. And look, there's a nativity set. We have a nativity that we have on our windowsill. And my little boy, Dane, was in the nativity last year too at school. Uh-oh, who has an elf on the shelf? Those cheeky guys got to so much mischief. And what a fun thing to do whilst we wait for Christmas. And look, candy canes. Oh, yum. I love having candy canes on the tree. And look, ho, 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 it's Father Christmas. Well, I hope Santa thinks I've been a good girl this year because I do really need that new diary for Christmas. And the last thing, there are three 
wise men. That's one of my favourite songs. We three kings of Leicester Square, selling socks at tuppence a pair, or something like that. <laughs> but you know what? Christmas is more than just presents and pretty things and getting up to mischief with elves and being extra good for Father Christmas. It's about so much more than that. And the problem is, when we have all these other things going on, we forget what Christmas is really about. So you see, Christmas is more than just presents and treats and acting in school and putting pretty decorations on the tree. It's about something so much more than that. I'm gonna find my scissors. Where are my scissors? Here we go, my super festive scissors. <laughs> and we're going to cut out all the things that actually aren't really that important at Christmas time. And you know, a lot of people have been saying something really crazy to me recently. They've been saying, Bron, Christmas is cancelled this year. I can't be with my family. I can't do all the things I love to do. We're not doing Christmas this year. But actually, Christmas isn't about all these things. Christmas is about the birth of Jesus. And it looks like this. Once we take away all the other trimmings, we see clearly what it's about. It's about the angel who comes down to Mary and tells her that she's going to have God's son. And Mary could have said no, but she didn't. She said yes. It's about the baby, baby Jesus, born in the stable far away from home, in the cold, and in places that weren't actually very nice for a baby to be born, not nice and safe in a hospital or a cosy room, in the place where they put the animal feed, and outside, in winter, that can't have been very nice. It's about the shepherds, the people who are the poorest in their community, were the very first people to hear about Jesus being born, that's amazing. Jesus wasn't just for people who were posh and rich and famous. Jesus was for everybody, even the poorest of the poor. But don't worry if you are rich and famous. Jesus was there for them too. The wise men who looked at the stars, who waited for God's promise to come true and came with gifts. And of course, they followed the star. It's really good fun to do all those other Christmas things, to have the presents and to decorate our tree and do Elf on the Shelf and visit Santa. But we must remember that the most important thing about Christmas is that we're celebrating Jesus being born, our King for all people and all times. I think it's time to sing a song. Do you remember our song? I have a puppy called Pongo. I have a puppy called Pongo. Well, we're going to do a Christmassy version. Oh, everything's better when it's Christmas. So we're going to sing, I have an elf called Elvis. Hey, hey. And our elf called Elvis wraps up presents all day. And he's going to go, wrap, 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 tape. Just like that. There's also going to be a snowman called Sandra and she throws snowballs all day and you're going to go throw, 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 splat, just like that. And the last one is a reindeer called Rennie who pulls his sleigh all day and is going to go pull, 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 phew, because it's hard work pulling a sleigh. Are you ready? Here we go. I have an elf called Elvis. I have an elf called Elvis, I have an elf called Elvis, he wraps up presents all day. Wrap, 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 tape, wrap, 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 tape, wrap, 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 tape, he wraps up presents all day. I have a snowman called Sandra, I have a snowman called Sandra, I have a snowman called Sandra, she throws snowballs all day. Throw, 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 splat. Throw, 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 splat. 
throw, 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 splat. She throws snowballs all day. I have a reindeer called Renny. I have a reindeer called Renny. I have a reindeer called Renny. He pulls his sleigh all day. Pull, 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 phew. Pull, 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 phew. Pull, 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 phew. He pulls his sleigh all day. Fantastic. Give yourselves a round of applause. It's time for a game! Hey, gather everybody round, see who could be the first to answer these questions correctly. So, a hundred people were asked these Christmas questions. Can you guess the top answer? The first question, a hundred people were asked to name one of Santa's reindeer. What do you think their top answer was? I'll give you a few seconds. Time's up. What did you think? If you said Rudolph, you are correct. Well done. Rudolph was the top answer, followed by Dasher, Dancer, Blitzen, Prancer, Donna and Vixen. If you said Cupid, congratulations, you got the pointless answer. <laughs> now, the next question. A hundred people were asked to name a popular Christmas symbol. What do you think the top answer was? What do you think? What do you think? Ooh. So, what do you think the top answer was? It was, of course, a Christmas tree. Christmas tree followed by a star, followed by Santa, then bells, cross, reef, holly, the manger, angels, snowflake, candy canes, and ornaments. Fabulous. Next question. A hundred people were asked to name something you need to wrap a gift. What do you think the top answer was? Mm, 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 mm. Have you got an answer? So, if you said wrapping paper, you'd be wrong. <laughs> the top answer was tape. Oh, I know. I didn't guess that either. If you did, well done. You got the top answer. Tape was the top answer, followed by wrapping paper, followed by the gift. You can't wrap a gift unless you got the gift. And then ribbon and boxes. Okay, next question. A hundred people were asked to name something people do on Christmas Day. What do you think the top answer was? Give you a few seconds. So, what was your top answer? So, if you said open gifts, you were correct. Open gifts was the top answer, followed by eating, nom 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 nom, followed by going to church, followed by singing carols, la 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 la, followed by visiting family. Next question, whoop. Name a Christmas story parents read to their children. A hundred people were asked to name a Christmas story they read to their children. What was the top answer? Ooh, time's up. So, the top answer was, "'Twas the night before Christmas. "'Twas the night before Christmas, and all through the house, "'not a creature was stirring, not even a moose. Or is it a mouse? Moose? Mouse? I think it was a moose. So, it was the night before Christmas was first, followed by the birth of Jesus, and then Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, Rudolph the Red -Nosed Reindeer, the Nutcracker, Frosty the Snowman, A Christmas Carol, and How the Grinch Stole Christmas. Last two. Name one food you might have at a Christmas dinner. A hundred people were asked to name one food they might have at a Christmas dinner. What was their top answer? Give you a few seconds, just a few seconds. Ba, 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 ba. Ooh. So the top answer was turkey, followed by ham, mashed potato. I don't get that. Roast potatoes all the way. Team roast for the win. Then stuffing and pie. I should have mentioned this was a hundred American um American people they were asked. 
and then cranberries. And the last question, who is the most popular person associated with Christmas? A hundred people were asked to name the most popular person associated with Christmas. What do you think the top answer was? So, what do you think? If you said Santa, ho, 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 then you were absolutely right. Santa was the number one answer, followed by Jesus, followed by Mary. Now, have a think. How often did the birth of Jesus and the story of Jesus' birth come top in those quizzes? Not very much at all. And in the case of some of the questions, Jesus and the story of Jesus being born didn't even make the top two, which is crazy. Things like, name something people do on Christmas Day, only six people out of a hundred said, go to church. That's a, really, that's a really big shame because, of course, Christmas is all about celebrating Jesus being born. So maybe this Christmas we can think of ways to put Jesus back at the forefront of Christmas. Maybe you could think of something new that you could do with your family. A lot of churches are having online services this year. If you want to stay in your pyjamas on Christmas Day, that's fine. You could always put on a church service on TV. Maybe you could set up a nativity in the corner and reenact the story of Jesus being born. Or find a storybook with the real Christmas story in so you can learn more about it. If you want to find it in your Bible, God's great big book, the best version is Luke chapter 2. That's my favourite. And you can also remember ways to give thanks as well. You can, when you open up your Christmas cards from your friends and family, thank God for that person. And you can also look at the decorations on your tree, which is what we're going through during our prayer time. And think of the people who have given you decorations in the past, or decorations that make you think of people and places, and you can give thanks for them or pray for them if they need praying for. Now, thinking about how we need to put God first, especially at Christmas, that reminds me of something in God's great big book. God's great big book, God's great big book is full of stories we can learn from everywhere we look. Whatever gets you down, whatever makes you frown, you'll find all the answers in God's great big book. God's great big book, God's great big book, is full of stories we can learn from everywhere we look. Whatever gets you down, whatever makes you frown, you'll find all the answers in God's great big book. Today's story in God's great big book isn't about Jesus as a baby, it's about Jesus as a grown-up. And it's a time when some of the religious leaders wanted to try and trick Jesus by asking him a question that they thought was really, really difficult. Now, I'm not going to read the story from the Bible for you. I'm not even going to act it out. I have got some super duper high tech whizzing all dancing puppets to share the story with you instead. Here they are. When the Pharisees heard how Jesus had bested the Sadducees, they gathered their forces for an assault. One of their religion scholars spoke for them posing a question they hoped would show him up. Teacher, which command in God's law is the most important? <laughs> That'll trick him. <laughs> Let's see what he says to that. <laughs> Jesus said, Love the Lord your God with all your passion and prayer and intelligence. This is the most important, the first on any list. But there is a second to set alongside it. Love others as well as you love yourself. These two commands are pegs. Everything in God's law and the prophets hangs from them. Weren't those puppets amazing? We really do pull out all the stops at 
Hashtag Kids Club. Now, in our story today, Jesus said that the most important commandment was to love God with all our passion and our prayer and intelligence. We don't often read it like that. Often what we hear is to love God with all our heart, all our soul, all our strength and with all our mind. Neither are wrong, they both mean the same thing, it's just a different way to say them. But it's quite nice to say it this way, to say to love God with all our heart and our soul and our strength and our mind. To help us remember, as well as doing the action, we can also sing a song. Now, this is a very well-known tune. I'm sure you'll pick it up very easily. Jesus taught them love the Lord with all your heart and all your soul, all your strength and all your mind, and love your neighbour as yourself. Love, love your neighbour, love, love your neighbour, love, love your neighbour, love the Lord and your neighbour too. Think you got it? Let's sing it together. Jesus taught the love the Lord with all your heart and all your soul, all your strength and all your mind, and love your neighbour as yourself. Love, love your neighbour, love, love your neighbour, love, love your neighbour, love the Lord and your neighbour too. Very good, that was brilliant. So, can you tell me again, what's the most important rule of all? To love God with all our heart, all our soul, all our strength and with all our mind. Why is that the most important rule of all? That and loving our neighbours as ourselves. They're the most important rules of all. And Jesus said this because, well, in the Bible, there are, maybe you could tell me, how many commandments are there in the Bible? Do you know? If you said 10, then I'm afraid that's wrong. There are 10 commandments in the Bible that are very famous, but actually there are 613 commandments in the Bible, 613. That's an awful lot to remember. Those Pharisees probably memorised them all instead of doing important things like looking after the poor. But all those rules told the people how to live. They told them how, how they should be dressed, what they should be eating, how they should be looking after each other and even how to look after their animals. But what Jesus said to love God with all our heart, all our soul, all our strength, and all our mind and loving our neighbour as ourself covers pretty much anything. If we're loving God, then we're not doing things like worshipping false gods or neglecting God or taking his name in vain. And if we're loving our neighbour as ourself, then we wouldn't hurt our friends or our family. We wouldn't kill each other. We wouldn't lie to each other. And we certainly wouldn't steal from each other. That's why they're the most important commandments of all. And Jesus said that we can hang all the rules off them. And he's right. So long as we are loving God with, are you ready? All our heart, all our soul, all our strength and all our mind and loving our neighbours as ourself, then we are doing all of the 613 other commandments too. And why are we thinking about this at Christmas? Well, it's to remind us that even before all the presents and before decorating the tree and before doing Elf on the Shelf and before eating all the lovely Christmas food, that the most important thing about Christmas is God and the gift that God gave us in Jesus. And to remind us that even at Christmas, when there's so many other things going on, we need to remember to love God with all our heart, all our soul, all our strength and all our mind and to keep loving 
our neighbours as ourselves? How can we do that? Well, there's lots of things we can do. We can say lots of prayers to God. We can say a prayer to say thank you to God for sending us Jesus. We can use things around us to pray. Just like later in our prayers, we're going to use our Christmas tree. And you can also use Christmas cards too. Instead of just opening up the cards in one go, maybe you could put them together and every day you can open them slowly and say a prayer to God to say thank you for the people that have written to you. Maybe if you know that somebody's poorly, you could ask God to help them too. You can also have a look at a nativity set and remember how important the very first Christmas was when Mary gave birth to Jesus, the Son of God. And what else could we do? We can do things to help our neighbours. We can send some food to our local food bank. That's a very good way to help people. And you can also send Christmas cards to people who you think might not get many cards at Christmas time. And of course, you can make lots of phone calls and video calls, especially to family that live far away and who would love to have seen you this Christmas. So this Christmas, don't forget to have fun. We're not saying don't have presents or lots of food to eat or a Christmas tree or an elf on the shelf. We're saying do these things, but remember that the most important thing is to love God with all our heart, all our soul, all our strength and all our mind and to love our neighbours as ourselves. For our prayers today, we're going to use our Christmas trees. Our Christmas tree has got loads of decorations that we've made and got over the years. And a lot of them have a special meaning to us, especially if they are things that people have made for us. So let me show you the things that I'm going to pray for with my tree. And maybe you can find similar things that you can pray in a similar way too. Here we have an angel. This was one made by my mother-in-law. And there's another angel up here too made of beads. And this was made by our friend Heather. Now we're not going to see our family and friends very much this year. So I'm going to pray for our family and our friends who live far away and who we don't get to see. This mouse used to have a candy cane tail. He's got a pipe cleaner tail instead. He was made by a school that I used to work at in Kingston. And so I want to pray for all the schools in our area and pray that the children stay happy and healthy and well before the holidays and that everybody, especially the teachers, have a really good rest. Last year I made baubles with pictures of our whole family in them, including Neris when she was still in my tummy. Today I want to pray for all the babies who were born in lockdown, who maybe haven't met all of their family yet, and who haven't been able to see much of the wide world. We pray that things will be easier soon, especially for the mums of these lockdown babies. We had this lovely bell on our tree that's come all the way from Finland. My husband Tim bought it when he went to a work conference there. And a bit further up, there's a decoration that's come all the way from America. My friend Kim bought it for me. He's a little small. He's two marshmallows on a piece of chocolate on a graham cracker. And he's a little traveling small because I was a little traveler too. So if you've got decorations that have come from overseas, you can pray for different countries like America and Finland for all countries that are suffering at the moment, places where there are war and places that are really struggling with the effects of COVID. This decoration is a very special one to me. It's one that my mum made when she was poorly and sadly she died not long afterwards. And so we pray for all people who have died and all the people that we miss at Christmas. And we pray for all those who are feeling sad because they've lost somebody they love. Yeah.
us God is listening Yes he can He is hearing All our worries Listening, hearing All he can God is listening Can he hear us God is listening Yes he can He is hearing All our worries Listening, hearing All he can Lord we think about All the memories And all the people we love Wrapped up in every decoration Piece of tinsel and every twinkling light around our Christmas tree. Keep our loved ones safe and healthy and well. Let them know that we are thinking of them. Let them know that we love them. Let them know that we miss them. Keep our community safe and keep our country safe. Bless places abroad. Let there be peace and healing among all people and all nations. And help for us to remember that the most important thing about Christmas is that you gave us Jesus, your only son, to be our Lord and our Saviour forever and always. Amen. Well, I hope you had fun at our first ever online hashtag kids club. We do hope you'll join us again next week. Until then, bye bye and stay safe. Goodbye, goodbye. It was good to see you. Thank you, thank you for tuning in. We'll have more fun when we see you next time. With crafts and laughs and silly songs, we'll see you. Then goodbye, goodbye, was good to see you. Thank you, thank you for tuning in. We'll have more fun when we see you next time. With crafts and laughs and silly songs, we'll see you.